want to share with you yeah. and your family, your family. The love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God. With one touch, ministries, we're touching hearts and changing lives. Yeah. <laughs> 
the hands of the enemy right now. I come against every spiritual warfare, whatever you're facing today. Whatever you're facing in your body, I come against it in the name of Jesus. Satan, take your hands off of God's children. Take your hands off of their lives. Healing to your body, healing to your mind, healing to your heart, your soul. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we bless the name of Jesus because he's worthy. I said because he's worthy. We bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Before we get started, let me talk to you a little bit. Hallelujah. Listen, I am so glad that you joined One Touch Ministries today. Thank you so much for coming in. I bless God for you. Thank God for, hallelujah, we have so many people on. Sister Yolanda, Brother David, and Little David, God bless you. Sister Angela Baldwin, God bless you. Thank you, woman of God. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for just finding your way to One Touch Ministries. Thank you to Minister Henry, Minister Austin, Pastor Shannon. Thank you so much. To God be all the glory. Yes. All the yes. honor yes. belongs to him. Oh, God, God is so good. Let me get myself together here. Yes. <laughs> God is so good, and he's worthy to be praised. I'm going to try my best to stay calm, to preach this, to teach this, to show you and kind of guide you, navigate you through the word of God. I'm going to do my best to stay calm as much as I possibly can. For some of you who don't know, I do wear glasses. I try not to put them on too much, <laughs> but I have to put my glasses on today because... <laughs> The words are just a tad bit too small for me. But God is so good. I'm so glad that you came on. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for taking out time out of your busy schedule. I see Minister Austin said, preach. Yeah. I'm going to do the best I can. Preach. My God, the word that God has given me to give to you today, I believe it's going to bless your entire life. If you could turn with me to the book of Ruth. If you could turn with me to the book of Ruth. Hallelujah. And one thing um, I did learn about the book of Ruth, it's a short book. It's a short, short book. Yeah. But let me tell you something. Even though it's a short book, it has a lot of information. It's a lot of information impacted in the book of Ruth. So I just want to just kind of give you a little bit of background about the book of Ruth. This book right here is for the people who feel like they're outsiders. This is a book for the outsiders, for the foreigners, for the orphans, for the ones who feel abandoned or who've been abandoned in life. This book is for you. My God. <laughs> oh, glory to God. But how many of you know, if you don't know the book of Ruth, I suggest that you really take up a little bit of time 
and just read the book of Ruth. Or go to your Bible app and let the book of Ruth speak to you. Because let me tell you something. It's going to bless you. It's going to impact you. It's going to fill you up with hope. And it's going to remind you that God is God. Yes. And God alone. And that he loves you. And you're important to him. <clears throat> so Ruth had several strikes against her. How many of you know, listen, in life we all have strikes against us. How many of you have a strike against you right now? Some of you are saying, well, what's the strike? The strike may be you're not married. The strike may be you have children and you still don't have a husband or your husband or your spouse has, has left you or has passed on. How many of you don't have a spouse? How many of you don't have children? How many you are living with someone or you don't have your own place or you don't have a job those are strikes against you My God. so Ruth had several strikes against her she had several strikes against her and, and at that time people honored women who had what? children Yeah. my God from Zion wow. Ruth did not have a child. Ruth did not have a child. So she had a strike against her. How many of you know during that time, women depended on their husband? Yeah. I mean, they strongly depended. And it was more about submission and being submissive to that husband and, and just kind of depending on your husband to be the cure-all for everything. My God. I mean, a lot of times, today's time, the women don't look at the men as a cure-all. Yeah. They look at the men as just being a man mm -hmm. and how they can pleasure you. Jeez. And it's a shame today because I've noticed a lot of fathers get very angry during Father's Day. They get angry at Father's Day because they're not honored enough. Well. They're not respected enough. Nobody celebrates them on Father's Day. And what's happening is the, the men become so upset. They become so upset. And then you have so many single moms uh -huh. out there trying to celebrate Father's Day like it's Mother's Day. And I remember the very first time in life I tried that. And the Holy Spirit chastised me. And he said, don't you ever, mm. don't you ever try to take Father's Day. You get one day. Matter of fact, you only get two days in your life that you should be celebrated. Your birthday, the day that you was born, yeah. and Mother's Day. That's the only time you need to be celebrated. Unless you're graduating or you, doing, you have accomplished something. Right. But those are the only given days to you. Your birthday and Mother's Day. He said, don't you ever try to celebrate Father's Day. He said, because you don't know what it feels like to be a father. Oh Just because you may be fulfilling a void, uh -huh. you still don't know what that feels like to be a father. Because see, you are only equipped to give birth, but you were never equipped to give identity. Come on, come on. Okay, I'm just teaching. My God. Just teaching, just teaching. Just trying to teach the you teaching, something. The teaching. I just want you to understand, Ruth had so many strikes against her because she depended on her husband. And at that time, Ruth lost her husband, so now she's a widow. Mm. So when you are a widow, when you depend on a man to do everything, and I and I guess this is why sometimes um, mothers who have been single mothers raise their children to and they trade their girls never to depend on a man. My God. Because why? He's always absent. He's always absent. And that means that could be in death well, or just because he don't want to take the responsibility. Wow. So they, they teach their girls to be independent. And then when a man does come, they don't know how to accept come 
from being able to depend on a man. Which causes friction in a relationship, which causes you to always end up by yourself. And you become a widow before you even get married. Jesus. So you're a widow all the way around. My God. You have lost something. And you say, well, a widow is a woman who's lost a husband. Yes, but if you lost a man in your life, and that means if he walked out that door or he was laying in a casket, either way, you became a widow. Come on. Okay. So either way, you don't know what it feels like to depend on a man. And God is trying to teach you how to depend on a man. Jeez. Because he's a man that should never what? Lie. Yeah. So what happens is because you don't know how to depend on a man, Come on. you don't know how to depend on the Heavenly Father. Jeez. Okay, I'm finished. Woo. And this is what happens when you don't know how to depend on the Heavenly Father. See, you, you view the Heavenly Father like you view your father, like you view your boyfriend, like you view your lover, your, your ex-husband. Yeah. You know, you're angry at him because why? He walks out the door. Why? He's not dependable. So that's how you look at the Heavenly Father. You look at the Heavenly Father as a man that's not dependable because why? You can't see him. You can't touch him. You can't feel him. But God is trying to tell you something. If you would just depend on me, stop looking for man to always secure you. Glory to God, I will provide. Yeah, 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 I will provide. Oh, shandy I will provide. Oh, shandy I said I will provide for you. If you just take a moment to trust me, if you take a moment to put your hands in the palm of my hands, some of you are saying, God, I need I need a new house, God. I need a vehicle, God. I need a job. with the Heavenly Father. Yes. Because I developed a relationship with the Heavenly Father. And I started looking at the Heavenly Father to be my soul <laughs> provider. Yes. Oh, I hope this is helping somebody here. Because I started looking at the Father as my soul provider. In return, when he sent me a man that looked like him, that was made in his image, my God, it made it easy for me to not only uh, have faith that he would not lie, cheat, uh, walk out, uh, and misuse me and mishandle me, uh, but I was able to trust uh, when he opened his mouth and said, uh, honey, I took care of it. Yeah, 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 yeah
many strikes against her. Yeah. I'm moving along because see y'all pushing me way too early. <laughs> don't push me, don't push me, Pastor. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So like I said, some of us have so many strikes against us. So some of you who know the story of Naomi and Ruth, uh, let me just give you a quick synopsis of the story. Take opportunity and read the book of Ruth so you can really understand where I'm going because I can now I'm in a position where I can only hit it and quit it. Oh glory to God. So Naomi had a husband at one time in her life because there was a famine in the land she lost him. How many of you have been in a famine and you've lost the man or the woman that you were so quietly in love with? There's a famine in the land. Yes. 
How many of you have been to a famine? So Ruth has lost not only her husband, she's lost her two sons. And now she's only left with herself and her two daughter-in-laws. Glory to God. My God. My God. My God. But Naomi always kept a close ear to God's lips. Yeah. And the reason why I say that Naomi kept her ears close to God's lips is because, uh, glory to God, glory to God, she heard that the Lord was in town. Yeah. The Lord was providing Come on. food for them. Come on. The Lord was providing. He was breaking people out of the famine. Jesus. And let me tell you something. It reminds me of the lady with the issue of blood. She was bleeding for years and years and years. And when she heard that Jesus was passing by. she See, one thing about it. When you are in need of God, you keep your ears close to the ground. Right. See, in the hood, they talk about some. I keep my, I'm going to keep my ears close to the streets. There you go. There you go. Come on. Y'all didn't think I knew that. See, in the hood, we say, I'm going to keep my ears close to the streets. That means I'm going to be listening out. If I hear something, I'm going to let you know I heard something. I'm going to let you know what the get down, what the get down is all about. You know, because I'm going to keep my ears close to the streets. And I'm telling you, Naomi kept her ears close to the streets, y'all. She kept her ears close to the streets because she knew if I go any longer, I'm going to be wiped out and my two daughter-in-laws are going to be wiped out. I need a breakthrough. How many of you huh, are in a famine and you're saying, God, I need a serious breakthrough. Come on. Yeah. Type that in the comments. God, I need a serious breakthrough. Through. I need a serious break. My God, I'm gonna need y'all to pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. My God, my God. So, so Naomi de decided to tell her daughter-in-law. She said, "Girls, girls, I know we're hurting right now. You lost your husband, and I lost my husband, and and you lost your husband. It's just us three ladies here, and and we got." together because I hear that the Lord is coming by and he's providing food. He's bringing nourishment and I need us to get ourselves together because we're getting ready to go on a journey. I need you. I need you. We are getting ready to prepare ourselves to go on a trip and on that trip on that trip on that trip we're going sit together. Can we sit together, ladies? I believe we can. My God. So Naomi and her two daughter-in-laws got together and they began to go on this path. Yeah. They got on the journey and they were going home. My God. And Naomi boldly tells her two daughters in the middle of the journey. She said, girls, oh girls, <laughs> I don't believe, I don't believe we can go any further together. Listen, I, I may have made a mistake here. How many of you have been on a journey and you're saying, and you get into that halfway point and you say, I don't believe we can make it. We don't have much gas in the car. Ooh, glory to God. How many times have you been in a vehicle and you believe that you can make it to your destination and then you get halfway there and you go, oh my God, the gas light went on. I don't know, children. Mommy and daddy may not be able to make it home. I don't know. And how many of you have been in a car and you say, oh my God, that gas light came on. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I'm halfway home, God. And I got to get to a gas station.
bed before. <laughs> I've been in the car before, and I've been like, oh, I believe I can make it home on this little bit of gas <laughs> and get halfway home, get across the bridge, and be like, oh, my God. <laughs> Some of 
of y'all out of the ghetto. Y'all been playing in the ghetto way too long. Yeah. Been playing in the hood way too long. Been playing in the hood way too long. Come on, come on. So Naomi, Naomi and Ruth continued on their journey and they got to the, where they needed to get to. And once they got there, my God, oh, and they got there and they, and they began to kind of like scope the land out. Huh? I'ma just have to go off of what I know. Huh? Naomi, <laughs> hallelujah, Ruth came to her and said, uh, Naomi, <laughs> I think I'm going to go explore the land just a little bit. Huh? Yeah. One thing about Pastor Shannon and I, when we moved here from, from New Jersey huh, to Orlando, huh, before we said yes to the dress, huh, before we said yes to the call, huh, before we said yes to the walk, huh, before we said yes to the path, huh, yeah. we said let's go check and scope out that land. Huh? So we took a trip huh, and we came here a couple of times before we said yes. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> 
land because I feel like if I could pick up the, the crumbs from people who have left stuff out in the field, I could come home and make us a meal. I can come home and bring you something. And a lot of times, I tell people, sometimes it's good to sit around and get the crumbs. <laughs> this is for all you people that want to run and be prophets. You better learn how to master servanthood first. And all you want to be running and be pastors and apostles, you better learn how to master servanthood. Not using people, not lying and stealing from folks. I said, you better learn how to master cleaning a toilet inside the sanctuary. You better learn how to get on your knees and you be the vacuum and not hot shot that because some churches don't have no vacuum. So you better go get a broom and a dustpan. I want you to master that first. Before I became a prophet, I became a doorkeeper in the house of God. I stood at the door greeting people. I ushered. I was on the nurse's board. I cleaned toilets. I cleaned my mother and father's office. Ruth fell in 
and found favor. Yes. Ruth fell and found favor. See, Ruth came in with no, no, no children. She came in being a widow. But let me tell you something, she found favor with God. She found favor. So when she found favor in this field, and she found favor with Boaz, uh, my God, he began to tell her, he said, listen, Ruth, I want you to come stay with my uh, field young ladies. Y'all, you stay with the field girls. He said, because I want you to know that if you go find somewhere else to go pick and get food from, he said, I, I'm going to tell you right now, somebody's going to try to take advantage of you. So he told the people that's working for him, he said, whatever she finds, let her have it. Come on. God is telling me to tell you, God's going to leave stuff behind. He said, you can have it. My God, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. He said, <laughs> glory to God. He said, I'm going to leave stuff behind for you. He said, and I want you to know that you can have it. Some of y'all not feeling this, huh? I, I, I said, God is telling me to tell you. He said, I'm going to leave stuff behind. He said, and you can pick it up because you can have that. He said, I'm going to, he said, because you found flavor with me. Then you got to see, you got to stay on the path. Huh? You got to stay in the process. Huh? He said, now I'm not going to give you favor all at one time. He said, we want to build up to this thing. Huh? And what happened was, we found favor with God. Huh? And when she found Because when you 
preaching out there who tell people everything, that's why it's not fair. But say the can be fair if you listen to the spirit of the Holy Ghost. Last week when we went to go to look for a house, favor became on our side. Why? See, the Monday before, we couldn't get up and go. 
and preserved. I have to preserve the anointing, but it's not mine to keep. Yes. So whenever I minister, I minister and I pour out completely. I empty out completely because it's not mine. It's not mine. I don't own this anointing. So a lot of people are trying to own this anointing and God said, you gotta stop trying to own my anointing. This is mine, saying of the Lord. This is not your anointing. This is not your power. This is not your church. These are not your people. He said, stop trying to own something that does not belong to you. Many are trying to own God's people, own God's anointing, own God's word. God said, this is not your word, not yours to own. And it's not yours to tax. He said, I'm pulling the covers off. He said, I'm going to pull the covers off of false prophets. He said, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you. Because you want to be the prophet, he said, I'm going to challenge you. You want to be the prophet, I'm going to challenge you, say of the Lord. He said, and I'm going to challenge you. He said, and don't you understand. He said, the word of God says, y'all should not want to be quick to be teachers in the church house. Because why? They're judged strictly. Come on. God said, I'm bringing judgment, and it's going to be strict judgment. You're playing with God. You're playing with the name. You're playing with the title of prophet. And God said, I am not pleased. I am not pleased. And nor am I impressed. He said, I'm going to judge you strictly. There's a strict judgment that's about to hit. There's a strict judgment that's about to hit because you're playing with God anointed. You're playing with God's power. You're taking a title. You have not been trained. You have not been trained. You have not been pruned enough. Your lifestyle don't line up right. And you're doing all you can to take the name the prophet. You better be careful. Step quietly. Step lightly. Tread lightly because I'm telling you God is getting ready to he's getting ready to judge strictly. He's not pleased, nor is he impressed. You better be careful. I'm warning you. Please be careful. Don't grab that name. And your lifestyle ain't right. My God. Don't grab that name and you shack it up. Don't grab that name and you can't keep your nose clean. Don't grab that name and you're an alcoholic, a whoremonger. Don't grab that name and don't live right because God is going to judge strictly. Ah. And it is so in Jesus' name, I'm done. Pastor Shannon, thank you so very kindly, man of God, yes. for allowing me to be in a position to deliver the word because you are the pastor. Come on, pastor. You're the pastor of this house and I appreciate you, man of God. Thank you for <clears throat> being a blessing to me. I honor my husband. He's my husband, but he's also my pastor. And I honor him today. I honor him as the man in the covering of this house. I honor him today because he could be one of those husbands who don't want to see his wife go any further than the kitchen. Oh, no. <laughs> and I praise God because my husband is a man of faith and power, but he's also a man that lives um, when he preaches, and he encourages me to continue to do what God called me to do. He pushes me without fail, and I appreciate you, man, God. Thank you for um, just doing, doing what you do.